Today we're driving the 2020 Lincoln Navigator. We are in the top of the line black label trim and uh, we have an interior that is called Yacht Club theme. So that's going to kind of just set the tone for this car. It's pretty extravagant, pretty wild, there's a lot of space. This is uh, Lincoln's, basically their fancy version of the Expedition. And this is also the long wheelbase, so the third row is almost back in another zip code. If you want space, you want luxury, you're going to haul people and things, this is probably the way to go, unless if you want an Escalade. We'll give you guys a little tour of the new 2020 Lincoln Navigator. We have a pretty wild looking interior. However, the button layout and everything is very similar to the Aviator that we had recently and the Continental that we drove recently. So if you're familiar with Lincoln products, you will already know where everything is located, which is nice. We have a nice big instrument cluster digital display here, a pretty good size infotainment here, Ford Sync, of course, there's a lot of storage space, this being a big truck-based SUV. Lots of cup holders, a place to put your phone with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all that good stuff. And you get trailer backup control, all of your buttons and knobs for climate control, and this slightly controversial gear selector here. My only complaint with this is that you do kind of have to keep your eyes off the road to uh, select park neutral reverse drive otherwise the ergonomics in here are pretty good all of your seat controls are here on the door and uh, speaking of these seats they're pretty wild to look at they're not quite as comfortable as you would think but there is so much adjustability that i have been able to get reasonably comfortable in these uh, but the piping the different sections it's all just a very interesting design and i think it's kind of cool we also have the Revel Ultima sound system. We'll do a sound test of that later in this video. Let's head outside as uh, the Navigator presents its running board for me to step out. This interior though is pretty wild. This thing is huge. I thought I'd park it in a parking space just for scale and context. It's a really big SUV. It doesn't get much bigger than this. Massive wheels. Look at the size of this rear door. It's just enormous. Of course, every time you're opening and closing doors, the running boards come out. I mean, this is, this is basically just, it has a minivan. Levels of space and practicality and utility. You get rear climate control. You can even control the radio, rear infotainment, all that stuff. A couple of cup holders back here. And these rear seats are very nice, very comfortable. Plenty of space to stretch out. And even the third row is very, very roomy. The advantage to getting the long wheelbase is that behind the third row, you even get a little bit of storage space to put people's stuff. That's pretty good. Easy to get around on the inside. No problems there. I'm not too sure how sold I am on the design of this Navigator. When it came out in 2018 at the Detroit Auto Show, it was pretty shocking to say the least, but it's definitely in keeping with Lincoln's recent design themes. It's a little bit boxier than some of their other vehicles, like the Aviator and the Nautilus, but uh, still, I think it does the job for at least uh, attracting luxury buyers. So like I said, lots of space in the back. You have some storage underneath here to put things. These seats fold completely flat. So you have just a ton of space. The third row is completely automatic. The second row will fold flat, but you have to manually lift it back up. And uh, with everything down, you get a ton of space in here.
Another cool feature is that if you press this button right here on this side, the window will pop up so you don't have to open up the entire tailgate. Pretty useful if you just need to open something up in the garage and you have limited space. If you can even fit this in your garage. So this Navigator is powered by the 3.5 liter EcoBoost. It makes 450 horsepower and something over 500 pound-feet of torque. That's mated to Ford's 10-speed automatic transmission. And we'll get some driving impressions on this on the road here soon, but I will say this is one of their best tuned 10 speeds. It's really smooth, really nice, very refined. And uh, this EcoBoost just has a ton of power. Even in something this big, it feels quite sprightly and quite quick. Um, that's pretty much where the sportiness ends, but uh, it's definitely got plenty of power, so that's nice. Should show you guys the lights here too. We've got some pretty cool interior ambient lighting. Beautiful LEDs, a separate strip down here, which looks pretty cool. And of course, the Lincoln logo lights up. And at night, it's actually, uh, it's pretty cool to look at. Coming around to the back, tail lights. You've got this really cool looking solid strip across the back. I mean, this thing is just, it's big, it's brash, it's blue. It's basically <laughs> a street yacht. Lots of cool little wood inlays. There's some really neat design touches throughout this Nautilus. There are some areas where it feels a little bit cheaper too, in keeping with American luxury cars. You know, there's a lot of, um, not as much in this particular test car, but usually there's a lot of black plastic here that could get scratched up. I actually quite like this white. It's very nice. It's very open and airy feeling, and it's going to wear very well. and It's going to age well. The, uh, the black plastic here is probably going to be okay because this isn't a super high use area where you're going to be scratching it up like you would here. Um, but otherwise, I think this interior looks pretty good. Creaks and rattles are kept pretty much to a minimum for a car with 5,000 miles on it. Journalist mile, that's pretty good. And uh, yeah, the ergonomics, everything is pretty easy to use in here. You get everything that you would want. Heated and cooled seats. The uh, <clears throat> heated steering wheel button is up in the infotainment here. Pretty typical for Ford sync systems, but I do wish Ford and Lincoln would just put a dedicated button for that either on the steering wheel down here or in these controls over here. So it's kind of weird to have the heated steering wheel separate from your heated seats and have to go into separate menus for that. Otherwise, sync works great. It's a nice, quick, and responsive system. Um, Apple CarPlay's quick. This is a beautiful display. Nice black levels and contrast ratios and, and all that good stuff. <clears throat> Even your grab handles are appointed nicely with some leather and uh, chrome surrounds. And come to think of it, there's kind of leather and chrome surrounds on just about everything here. You have your drive mode selector button here. A few different drive modes. Normal, which is pretty much what I've been driving in. Conserve for efficient driving. Excite and slippery, deep, snow climb, all that good stuff. This will pretty much stay in rear wheel drive for the most part, and then it, in certain modes it'll shift into four wheel drive auto. If you get the towing package, you're good to tow up to 8,300 pounds in this Navigator, so that should serve most people's needs. Lincoln has kept your instrument cluster display pretty minimal. There's not a lot of uh, distracting elements. And as you can see, as, as you kind of rev up the engine, it'll illuminate certain parts of the tack, and same with the speedometer. You can see your fuel economy, tire pressure, transmission temp, trailer info, trip odometers, and you can go into settings and customize a lot of that different stuff too, which is nice. You have advanced settings, towing settings, all this good stuff. But for the most part, um, I do like how everything is laid out in here. It's pretty easy to use once you get used to it. All right, let's go for a drive and move on to driving impressions. Um, we have a little tiny reverse camera there. does the job, and um, 
besides that actually visibility parking and maneuvering and looking around this is is made pretty easy because there's a lot of glass in this navigator all right let's head out onto the road see what this thing is like to drive steering is very light as you would expect even though this thing is huge it actually isn't too cumbersome to wheel around tight spaces the turning radius is fantastic lock to lock this steering wheel just feels like it it spins forever and you're so high up that you do have very nice visibility of your lanes your lines and uh, these mirrors can be positioned pretty well to see cars around you the one on the passenger side is pretty wide angle too and you do get blind spot monitoring Test this EcoBoost here. As I said earlier, power in this thing is plentiful. There is a lot of torque. The turbos kick in and at low revs, you'll kind of hopefully hear what I mean, but it almost sounds like a V8 at low RPMs, which is kind of cool. Counting on this Mustang to beat this dart off the line. We'll see. Stop start engages very smoothly and quickly. And the ride quality is surprisingly good considering this thing has huge, massive rims. Let's put us into, uh, oh, let's go into excite mode. Why not? flatten out the handling a little bit. We do have adaptive dampers. It corners a lot flatter in Excite mode. It tunes the four-wheel drive system to be just a little bit sportier. Yeah, this thing pulls. It's fast. For a big, full-size SUV, it's fast. There's, you're not gonna be wanting for power here. On the highway, it's super comfortable, very smooth, virtually no road or wind noise. It's very quiet too. And if you close this <clears throat> panoramic sunroof, you do uh, you do cut down on the noise just a little bit. This navigator handles about how you would expect it to. It feels like a big, heavy, large SUV. All the controls are very light. Really, the only complaint that I have with its driving dynamics is in the braking department. The brakes just feel a little bit under boosted. I would like to feel have just a little bit more confidence and more power from the brake braking system. The pedal's pretty vague and um, it just doesn't quite have the bite that I would like. Show you guys the turning radius up here. I think overall, if you can get past the looks of this Navigator, it offers a really smooth, luxurious, and comfortable driving experience with just tons of utility. There's so much space in this thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's your minivan that can uh, take you and, and all your friends from A to B, but also tow a boat or a trailer completely comfortable and capable to do that without any issues and uh, I haven't driven an Expedition for about a year or so but to me this just feels so much more refined I remember the Expedition being a little bit jerky a little bit rattly and Lincoln has done a nice job kind of smoothing out the edges here in the driving experience and just the overall feel of the vehicle and of course this also competes with the Escalade so uh, you know, you either want an Escalade or you don't. They're both about equally brash. A lot of compelling stuff here. Pretty much all the features that you could want and uh, all the space that you could need in a vehicle. 
I like that this is now a truck based SUV. Uh, it does have independent rear suspension, which helps the ride quality and refinement quite a bit. But you know, this is body on frame, rear wheel drive architecture, and uh, that helps a lot with its capability and just driving feel. While we're sitting here, let's do a sound system test. Hear what this Revel audio system is like. believe that this only has 450 horsepower it feels like it's closer to 500 or 550 for the thing for the weight that this thing has and the heft that it carries around Regarding cruise control works quite well. Ford Lincoln have always done a pretty good job with their system. Lane keep assist just kind of bounces you between the lines, but for the most part, that's easy to turn on and off just right here at the indicator stock. But I do like how responsive and uh, intuitive the radar guided system is. skip five mile an hour increments by holding the plus minus button, all that good stuff. Once you get onto the highway, the ride quality really smooths out a lot. You could just devour miles in this navigator. Hopefully that gives you guys a pretty good idea of what this Revel audio system sounds like. One thing I will mention about ride quality, when you get over a lot of jittery surfaces and a lot of bumps, like almost on a, a, a dirt road or something like that, it does lose a lot of its composure. So, you know, this isn't necessarily an off-road vehicle, but it can handle some off-road scenarios. Just with these massive wheels and skinny sidewalls, um, it's not going to offer as much ride comfort or off-road capability as like a truck or something like that. All right, guys. Well, that pretty much sums up the Navigator for me. Um, not, a, not a whole lot of, uh, a lot of complaints on this thing. It's, it's pretty beastly. It's pretty wild. It's a hundred grand. This uh, black label is just, I think it's uh, with destination and everything. It's $102,000. And uh, you get some neat little concierge services with the black label trim. I get a decent warranty. 
and uh, you just get a lot of vehicle and a lot of metal for your money, which, uh, which is, I think, what a lot of American luxury vehicle buyers want, and uh, this definitely delivers. All right, guys, well, that's going to wrap things up. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks for sticking around for this one. If you want to see any more on this Navigator, head on over to Winding Road Magazine's YouTube channel. We'll be sure to post a night drive on this, show you guys some of the ambient interior lighting, which is always very exciting, and uh, maybe do a day drive on this too. So I think uh, Charlie from Daily Motor is going to be doing some towing with his race car with this this weekend. So. He'll probably post a uh, towing review on Daily Motor, at least include that in his impressions. I'm sure it'll do a fine job hauling a 5,000 pound trailer and race car. Well under the tow limits for this Navigator. But yeah, that's going to wrap things up. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.